Hi, my name is Raquel, and order buy or sell. You have to have the money, the beast on your mind or in your hand. It's one of those words they don't translate correctly. The uh, it's in this New Testament. I'm not a, a very religious person, well, but you know I believe that miracles can happen, and uh, it, today is supposed to be some kind of holy Jewish day, Rosh Hashanah. They say it's um, one of their most important days. I guess it's their New Year or something. I don't know, but. I think it's just a bunch of superstition. But a lot of these Christians believe this, and it, you know, there's a lot of wisdom in the Bible, and this is just like history. It's kind of saying that um, no one buys or sells without the money of the beast, the kerygma, and they're, the whole context is they're talking about Nero Caesar. Let me see if I can find this thing really quick here that explains about the 666. Nero was an emperor who lived in uh, around 66 AD, and uh, that's when the Jews revolted against Rome and started coining their own money so that whoever had Nero's money was um, not doing the right thing, and so they were trying to encourage people to use their Jewish money. But it's the mark of the beast is money, and that's that, a word that they don't translate correctly, and that's what I wanted to show you right here. There's the Greek word karagma, <clears throat> and it's over here. They translate it as mark, when it really should be the money of the beast. And you can see that it means the impress on the coin, and it also means stamp money coin. And Plutarch, that's an Antipater Thessalonius, lived about the time that the Book of Revelations was written, which was around 68 A.D., sometime around then, <clears throat> right around the time that the Jews revolted against Rome and started coining their own money. Well, that background looks kind of dark, but uh, here's this thing that kind of explains it. And you can find all this stuff on my website. It's um, You have to look in an unabridged Greek-English lexicon to find this. Uh, there you go. <clears throat> Something I made quite a while ago. I've been doing this eliminating money stuff for about, oh, I'd say 30 years or more. And I made this Gospel of Eliminating Money. This was like the first one I made. And this was in, uh, well, I made this one in uh, 1985, I, I believe it was. This was like the first one I made. And there's a bunch of quotations by famous people who believed in eliminating money. And then down below I have some things about, well, there's the mark of the beast, and I explain the kerygma again. And then Reagan equals devil, and the devil etymology means to slander. If you look up in the dictionary, the Webster's Dictionary, you'll see that the devil means to slander. And at the time I was doing this, this was one of these Rolling Stones songs. And it says, 2,000 light years from home, I shouted out, who killed the Kennedys? My riches can't buy everything. I can't get no satisfaction. And my kids, they just don't understand me at all. Those are all words from like Rolling Stones songs. And back then, they had this rub-on type, and so they didn't have computers. And so I used this rub-on type. I started my way out, and that's how big it got. So this other stuff has to do with, like, the Kennedy assassination. And uh, Ronald Reagan was the president then, and he bombed Gaddafi back in... Uh, like 82 or 3. And I made another uh, thing about Gaddafi. And, uh, well, here's this thing. The, I made a new version of the Gospel of Eliminating Money, and I put this up on my website. I put all the quotations on a 8.5 by 11 double-sided sheet. And I have just put up a PDF. This is the Gospel of Eliminating Money. I just put a PDF up on the, uh, oh, let's see, my web page there on my website. 
And on the back we have Karl Marx on the Jewish question. And a lot of people don't realize that Karl Marx um, believed in eliminating money, but he also, and of course, he also said that uh, religion is the opiate of the masses, and opium is a stupefier, so that, like, these people believe that Jesus is going to come in the clouds and save them, and, and uh, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ has risen from the dead, you'll be saved. And these people think that, uh, you know, that revelation isn't um, something that's happening now. It's something that's going to happen in the future. And they, some of them think that this mark of the beast is an implant in your hand or it's going to be a credit card or it's the barcode. But the word isn't translated correctly. It's the karagma. It's the, the money of the beast. In order to buy or sell, you have to have the money of the beast on your mind or in your hand. And then Jesus, when he first came into Jerusalem, the first thing he did was upset the tables of the money changers. And um, then he uh, told his disciples to go forth without any money in their purses. And uh, he also said that you can't serve God or money. You'll either love the one or hate the other or hold to the one and despise the other. And then the Pharisees, who loved money, heard all this and scoffed. It's all in Luke 16, that, that whole three paragraphs there. So, you know, this, uh, I just, you know, if these Christians would just understand the logic, you know, Jesus was supposed to be the logos or the logic of God, but, um, you know, these Christians today are like St. Paulians, and that's the problem. You can see that these are etymologies, and, uh, yeah, these are, this is an etymological dictionary. And so uh, you see where this logic comes from, logos, and logos means reasoning. And uh, it, they, this, it says it's rare, it rarely means the word. So this book of John in the first chapter, the first uh, sentence says that in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. But it should say in the beginning was the logos or the logic. And so, like, if it's not logical, it's of the devil. And I was showing you earlier that the devil, if you look up the etymology in an English dictionary, the word devil, it means to slander or falsely accuse. It's a Greek word, diabolos. <clears throat> so, anyway, we'll get that religious stuff out of the way. And um, I was really kind of excited about this Occupy Wall Street thing. I made this dollar up in... Uh, and I've been watching this. They have a live stream. It's on live stream, uh, and it's called, um, what is it? Global Revolution. Live stream Global Revolution. And they have live from downtown, and <clears throat> they have a live stream up in Oregon I was watching. And uh, they're supposed to have a Occupy Wall Street here in Tucson, but... Uh, I kind of think of these kids down there on Wall Street as like George Washington. I was saying to one of my friends that, like, um, you know, George Washington crossed the Delaware and uh, during the winter, I, think, I don't know if it was Christmas or whatever, and it was really cold, and they used to show him on the bow of the ship, that famous painting. I mean, and then you hear some of the stories of them in winter. You know, they had to endure over winter. So I'm kind of thinking, you know, these these Wall Street people, I mean, some of them are really, you know, they're survivors, and I hope that there's some rich people that can send these kids, like, bivouac sacks and down sleeping bags. I mean, they're going to need some good expedition wear, and uh, they can't set up tents there. It's kind of, it's really a ridiculous kind of a uh, setup they have. It's, they, they, they still don't have enough people to move to Liberty Park. I don't know if they'd uh, be allowed to set up uh, tents in Liberty Park. This Zuccotti Park, it belongs to, um, it's kind of a quasi-business government plaza. The, it used to be a street there, and then the building next door, the city gave it to the building next door, provided that they build a plaza. And so the building maintains it, I guess. And uh, and and uh, so they have um, different kind of rules there that they can't set up tents and they can't um, 
they don't allow them to use um, gasoline. So I mean, I don't. I think they got it converted to propane. That's what they were going to do to run their generators. <clears throat> and uh, they've already endured a, a few um, rainstorms, but you know, it's they're already getting prepared for the winter, and so they're trying to get some clothes. But if they can survive, they earlier today on that live stream they showed this woman that's been in front of the White House since 1981. Her name is um, oh gosh, uh, well we call her Connie, Connie Piccoletto, and she's got a web page. If you Google like White House, White House protest, uh, Lafayette Park, and Connie and Thomas, those were the <clears throat> Thomas. His last name was Wisdom, and and um, I happened to be in Washington D.C. in in 1981, and I started. I demonstrated in front of the White House with um, Connie and. Um, Thomas there, and I had some signs, you know, about eliminating money. We made some huge signs, and like the FBI and all these kind of weird people would come by, you know, straight, and they'd have their Bibles in their hand, but, you know, you could tell they were probably FBI. Because I had these signs about, like, the Kennedy assassination, and I had, I think I had a sign once about the Holocaust being a fraud. And uh, so one time I was walking back to my car, and I happened to cut across this railroad pass or something, and these park cops grabbed me and, uh, well, anyway, they <clears throat> they put me in a St. Elizabeth's Hospital for uh, a few days, and um, they wanted to keep me there, but, for, you know, fortunately there was a psychiatrist that was on my side, and, uh, you know, because back then, you know, I'd start talking about the Kennedy assassination, and you know, there's nothing wrong with me, I'd tell them, and they'd, and they'd kind of look at me like I was crazy. And so this one psychiatrist said, just don't say anything, you know, don't say anything. And so I didn't say anything, and uh, these psychiatrists were telling me, oh, you need help, you've, you've got this problem and that problem, and, you know, you need to stay here and get help. And I said, no, sir, I don't need to stay in here, I just need to get out of here. And legally they could only keep me there for three days unless they could determine that there was something wrong with me, you know, and but and so they were trying to really convince me, but I don't know why, this one guy, I don't know if he was the ombudsman or what, but he was on my side, I guess he realized, maybe he realized I was telling the truth about the Kennedy assassination, and uh, I didn't know about the Holocaust then, I don't think, and I don't think I mentioned it, but, so they were always trying to get me, they um, got me here in Tucson once, well, more than once, I used to protest and demonstrate at the University of Arizona and uh, pass out my papers and a lot of students remember me. I had like a naked protest there once. I got totally naked and I made it in the yearbook. Here's a really old picture, 1983, of me demonstrating at the, um, on the mall of the university. I wish I could find the original of this. It's from 1983. Or maybe I do have it. I think I have it up on the website because I went over to um, the uh, library there at the university and uh, got them to um, get the, from what do they call it, the uh, uh, document section there, or the, there it is. <laughs> and I had all these signs, I made these signs, and I made this robe, and I made this backpack, and that's a ground cloth. And I surrounded myself with these signs. I'll try to get a better picture for you, because I, I took a photograph of the newspaper, and then I went home and, and made a JPEG and put it up on the website. But, well, the problem is a lot of these, um, you know, I've been on the forum for the um, Occupy uh, Wall Street thing, and well, people keep bringing up this Fed stuff. And there was this guy who gave a speech about the Fed down there, and he kind of looked like he was raving. You know, and he, these people have a, a false idea that if we just got rid of the Fed, everything would be fine and dandy. But um, the Fed really isn't the problem. The real problem is money. And money is totally unnecessary. With modern machinery and abundance, then it's not necessary. And I was trying to find that quotation by Gaddafi. I was telling you earlier that Reagan bombed Gaddafi. And... Uh, 
and he tried to get them back then because Gaddafi believed in eliminating money. Where um, there's an abundance, then there will be no reason to have money. And, and then Gaddafi says practically the same thing here when the socialist, he calls it a socialist society, uh, reaches a stage, profit and money will disappear. And it's through a productive society where production reaches a certain, you know, half the people in the United States work at unnecessary jobs. And, you know, like pushing papers, you got the bankers, bookkeepers, accountants, salesmen, sales clerks. And then this guy, Nikolai Bukharin, was a um, protege of Lenin. And in, he was the editor of Esvestia. And uh, he wrote The Principles of Communism, where he said that... Um, communist society will know nothing of money and there won't be any barter or work credits. I put that in brackets. It says it elsewhere in there. It's just like up here, you know, when you have an abundance, I think Karl Marx even talks about it in, in Das Kapital. It's like if you have a, you know, if, if, if there's not any famine or anything and you've got plenty of bread to go around, there's no reason to only give everybody two slices. You can give it plenty of bread. So, there is an abundance, like, uh, you know, a hundred years ago when, well, almost two hundred years ago when Karl Marx wrote that, you know, they were still harvesting with 20 mule teams and stuff like that, to, to, you know, but today with modern machinery we can make, um, and there used to be a chart, an uh, agriculture chart, I don't know if I have it with me, but it tells you how much man hours it takes to harvest a uh, hundred bushels of corn or a hundred bushels of soybeans, and I don't think it uses soybeans, but stuff like that, and potatoes, and it's like, um, you know, in the turn of the century, it took like six hours, six man hours to, or more, I don't know, but it's, you know, it's it's incredible. I mean, they teach you this in school where, you know, like, what was it, at the turn of the 19th century, where there was, you know, like 60, 80 percent of the people lived on farms in the, in the 1900s, or during the Great Depression, there was at least... 60% or more working, living on farms. So when the um, Great Depression came, people had their gardens and they could barter and trade their, um, their stuff. And, uh, but like a lot of people think this Federal Reserve, if we just got rid of the Federal Reserve, everything would be fine and dandy. And they, they think we can go back to a gold standard, but there, there isn't enough gold on the earth to, to make, to, well, I mean, there'd be a bunch of funny money anyway, because, like, what's a person going to do with $100? Take it in there and say, hey, give me a piece of gold. I mean, do you know how small that would look? I mean, it would be so small. And then how are you going to know if it's real gold? I mean, gold is so easy to debase. It's just, and, and then it even says in, <clears throat> in the Bible, I mean, gold is, um, it's not practical. Now, silver is more practical than gold. You can use it for more things. And it looks better. I like. I think it looks better. Dear, I gotta clear my throat. <clears> throat> Let me turn the sound down for a second. No, I can't do that. But I don't have that much more time. Maybe I'll take a drink. Let me see. I'll show you something. I'll show you something while I take a drink here. Now here's the uh, unemployment picture. And let me see how late this is. It's pretty recent. I must have gotten it recently. Well, it says October seventh, <clears throat> and you can see that. How, this is millions of people that have been unemployed for 52 weeks or more for for a year, and you can it's that's like well there's more people unemployed. I mean, what are all these people going to do? They're are they going to be homeless? Are they living with their sisters or what? You know, I mean, uh, it shouldn't be this way. And this was like in whoa that looks like it's about 1970 six or so, the unemployment went up pretty high. <clears throat> it, we have these cycles, and that's what the Federal Reserve is supposed to stop, are these, these cycles, and they're supposed to regulate the money. I mean, it's like, would you rather, if we got rid of the Federal Reserve, would you rather have, like, Congress manning the money? I mean, Congress is really irresponsible and stupid. I mean, they're the ones that pass these bills you know, they, the Congress, and Bill Clinton even signed it. He signed this Commodity Futures Modernization Act like a couple of days before he got out of the presidency. It's kind of one of those things like, 
<clears throat> like this Jekyll Hyde thing, you know, but it, where they, this, what was it, where they signed this Federal Reserve thing and it was passed on Christmas Day or something. So this commodities futures thing uh, allowed these banks to sell derivatives and to sell these credit default options. And the nominal amount of derivatives is it's more than $531 trillion. It's like, if, it's just so ridiculous and that this happened. And it just sounds so absurd. And you wonder, what, where did all the money go? And you know, why did they throw these people out of these houses? And it's just like this funny money. I think what, what's going on here is, you know, they know that things cannot go on like this. It's like we're running out of oil, we've got the global warming, the ice caps are melting. Pretty soon, you know, if the t tides rise, then Florida and all these buildings along the coast are going to start sinking in the sand. So, I mean, there's going to be huge population migrations and it's going to cost a lot of money. Plus, you know, if the economy ever did start going again, it's going to use up a lot of gasoline and so the price of oil is going to go up. It's like we're so totally doomed right now. It's, you know, the only kind of thing that's giving me any hope at all is this Occupy Wall Street thing. It's like Ralph Nader showed up the other day and there, there was a good economist that showed up down there at the Occupy Wall Street thing. I looked at his website and even this economist, I can't remember his name, but even he's Somebody asked him, you know, what what's this thing about the Fed? And he and he even said it's it's not the Fed that's the problem. But he I don't, he's a Marxist, this guy who spoke down there. But he um, somebody asked him about eliminating money, and and I think he said it was a good idea. But you know, it was just like one sentence in his whole web page. I mean, this guy isn't like me who believes in eliminating money and devotes thirty years of their life to try to spread this word around. But like it's doesn't seem to be bearing fruit too much. You know, these people think that democracy is so good, like on at this Occupy Wall Street thing, they, they talk about this is what democracy looks like. Well, today there was some guys that wanted to play the drums, and then other people wanted to sleep, but the rule was that, you know, after 10 o'clock, even on a Friday night, you're supposed to have quiet time, because people, some people, one, one guy said he hasn't slept in 20 hours, and so, you know, people need to sleep, and it's noisy down there to begin with. So anyway, it's like Plato said democracy was one level above tyranny. I mean, it's, it's good to have a consensus, but I mean, I don't know how things are going to change unless we get a bunch of famous people to get together and say, yeah, we need to just eliminate money, or we could begin by recalling the currency and start issuing these 666 dollars, like what I have behind me there. <clears throat> and then once we spread the word and educate people about how money is unnecessary, we could eliminate it. But while we're recalling the currency, if anybody had like a hundred million dollars, they would have to justify where they got it from. And if they couldn't, you know, like if they got it from drug dealing or something that was not, or, or bank stirring, then, you know, they wouldn't get their money back. But anyway, my name is Raquel. In order to buy or sell, you have to have the money of the beast on your mind or in your hand. Bye.